Good morning, this is Pastor Jeff, and this is the sermon that I preached on Sunday morning, August 18th, and last night, Wednesday the 21st. It is for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. I preached out of the Gospel reading. So the Gospel reading was the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood and abide in me and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which it the ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats the bread will live forever. The word of the Lord. So John 6 may be one of the most difficult chapters in the Bible. And we as a church hear the passage over multiple Sundays. In today's section, Jesus introduces the concept of flesh. It dominates the conversation that Jesus is giving to those in earshot. To put it bluntly, they were shocked. They know the Torah, and the Torah clearly states that you are not allowed to eat blood, and you cannot eat any flesh that has any blood left in it. Besides going against the Torah, eating human flesh is near impossible, and they have questions. The core question that they are holding on to is the following. How can this man... Give us flesh to eat. These words are a moment of transition for the crowd. Earlier they were grumbling. Now they are arguing with one another on these words and concepts that Jesus is trying to teach them. For myself, I think that if we lean into Jesus using this imagery as a metaphor, it can make it simpler for us to digest a bad pun, I know. Jesus is offering an amazing gift to his followers. Even for us today, we need to think about how we can receive what Jesus is offering. If we as individuals and as a church community want to experience the saving power of Jesus, we need to feed on him. So how do we do that? We must absorb the teachings of Jesus. Our dwelling in him must be so deep that the mind of Jesus becomes our mind. We need to come to a place where the power of Jesus resides in us, and the power that Jesus had has become our power. Can our lives be so intertwined with Christ that when you come to a place where a decision needs to be made, you know what Jesus would do if he was in our place? I think that it helps if we step outside of the sixth chapter of John 
and take a look at it from the outside and also take a look at it from Jesus teaching in its entirety and the Gospel of John John is very clear Jesus is connected to God the Father then the connection of Jesus the Son is connected to us we have the indwelling of Jesus in our lives and that is why we are able to be so deeply connected to him when we eat the flesh of Jesus and drink the blood of Jesus we remain in Jesus as I have mentioned in numerous times I'm not a Greek scholar it has been over 30 years since I have taken a Greek class and I use scholars and technology to help me navigate the nuances of the language and what is missed in the translation to English and attempts to make it simpler for us for example in today's text the Greek word meno is a verb that is translated to remain however the deeper translation would be a mutual indwelling God the Father and Jesus are so deeply connected Jesus then offers his followers the same connection with him I would love for you to dwell on the following Jesus invites you to be in a relationship with him that reflects the exact relationship that he has with God the Father if we are willing to enter into this type of relationship and grasp the concept we should be filled with security and comfort I'm not sure about you but security and comfort are two themes that I would love to have in my life and without a shadow of a doubt we can know that we can always be in the presence of Jesus and Jesus will always provide care to us so the question for us today is the following how will you respond to the great invitation it would be my hope and prayer that each of us would want to say yes and looking forward to having a union with Christ that endures with us forever as I was wrestling with this passage I knew that I had to connect some of the text from last week especially with me not preaching from the gospel text last week the crowd they had a decision to make it was a relationship choice would they choose to come to Jesus and desire to have a relationship with him this week it is about that next step the next step is about participation and they and we are going to choose to be participants in the life that Jesus is calling us to we can move away from the flesh and blood and, and go deeper some might say that we are using it as an excuse to avoid the hard wrestling but I don't think that is the case relationship and participation Jesus gives us the invitation will we accept the invitation we could think that it's fairly simple yes I want to be in a relationship with Christ and I want to participate in the ministry that he sets before us however as we know it is not as easy as we might imagine if it was we would probably see more individuals attending worship services watching online and more individuals who are willing to participate in the ministry of the church yesterday I shared an ELCA write-up on the church's Facebook 
page. It had been passed around quite a bit last week. If you have been paying attention, the ELCA has been receiving a lot of press the last 10 days, and the church wanted to make a statement for those who are unfamiliar with the ELCA. With the focus on the ELCA, I was taken back to our baptismal promises. I think that I was drawn to them for numerous reasons. One, confirmation will be starting in a few weeks. In four weeks, I'll be leading a baptismal service for a church family. But more important, in my opinion, is that the promises are tied to those two key words of relationship and participation. Can you imagine what Bayview and all the Lutheran churches would look like if everyone in our church lived out her five promises? Let me share with you once again as I close out my sermon. Live among God's faithful people. Hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. Proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed. Serve all people following the example of Jesus and strive for justice and peace in all of the earth. Can you imagine our lives and our communities would be radically different as we get ready to live out one of the promises by sharing in the Lord's Supper. May we remember the words of Sarah Miles when she first encountered the sacrament of communion. She stated, I discovered a religion rooted in the most ordinary but subversive practice, a dinner table where everyone is welcome. May we have the courage to make time to come to the meal as often as we can and invite others to come to the table as well. Amen.